Hello and welcome to the PowerPoint presentation for the respiratory system for 2402 lab. Uh, this is section 22 in your lab book. All right, so this is kind of an overview, uh, basic functions of your respiratory system. Uh, the main job is to get uh, gases into your blood and the blood then, uh, and then those gases can go to your tissues, but there are several other <clears throat> functions as well. So moving your air, the air in and out of your lungs, it has a technical name, as you see on a uh, table on page 106, and that's called pulmonary ventilation. So that actual breathing is called pulmonary uh, ventilation. Uh, on the way into your respiratory system, the air is filtered with the hairs and mucus in your nasal cavity and mouth. No, not the hairs in your mouth, but the mucus. Uh, the air is moistened and it's uh, warmed, especially if you're somewhere cold. Like We don't really need to warm it around here. Uh, then when gas is exchanged between the air that's in your lungs and the <clears throat> capillaries that uh, supply your lungs, that process is called external respiration. So when you have a, uh, a cap, like an alveolus, here's some alveoli, and here goes a blood uh, vessel right there. So the oxygen is going to go into the blood and CO2 is going to come out of the blood into, the, into those alveoli. That process is called external respiration. Now you might think, well, why is it external? Because it's in my lungs. But it's a really, it's a continuous pathway from, your, from the outside air down here into the, into the alveoli. So it's happening with air, <clears throat> with oxygen that's, that's technically outside of your tissues. Now once it's absorbed into the blood and your blood takes it down to the cells, that uh, the process of gas exchange there, where the blood's gonna go, the, sorry, the gas is gonna go from your blood into your cells or from your cells into your blood, that's called internal respiration. Lastly, <clears throat> when, you're, when the oxygen is used by your cells, that's called cell respiration. And that's the process where you do, you know, glycolysis and uh, Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain to get ATP. You also use your respiratory system for sound production, and that's a really important function, believe it or not. Uh, it, humans have gotten to be as powerful as they are uh, partly because they are able to communicate with each other so well. <clears throat> Moving on. Uh, the, uh, the pleura. All right, so a pleura is a, a membrane associated with the lungs. So the serous membranes that we learned about before uh, have location-specific names. So the serous membranes of the lungs are called the pleurae. So you have the parietal pleura, which lines the uh, inside of the body wall. So it'll line the, the diaphragm and the inside of the ribs and so on. The visceral pleura is the lining that lines the actual lungs themselves. There is a pleural cavity in between the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura filled with something called pleural fluid. Pleural, it's easy to say, pleural fluid. And this stuff allows you the lungs and the, the, the parietal pleura to slide along each other so they don't stick. They don't get, you know, there's a lot of movement of your respiratory system when you're inspiring <clears throat> and expiring and you don't want those those uh, delicate membranes to, to adhere to each other. If you ever have one of those sharp pains in your ribs when you're, when you're taking a breath, now there's a good chance that that sharp pain is caused by a, a sticking of those two membranes together. Usually that ends up with me like punching myself in the ribs and it goes away, but who knows. Uh, uh, that Because that fluid is a non-compressible, that liquid is non-compressible, when your lungs expand, the uh, fluid that's in between the the ribs and the and the lungs drags the lungs with them. So as you inspire, as you breathe in, your volume of your lungs gets bigger and the lungs get larger, which causes the volume to drop. I'm sorry, <clears throat> causes the pressure to drop. And that's that's what we see here in uh, Boyle's law, which I'll talk about on the next page. So it's not a very confusing. Everybody gets like, oh no, math, but it's fairly simple math. Pressure, you see down here in that formula, pressure one times volume one equals pressure two times volume two, and I'll explain that with the next uh, slide. Okay, a couple of more summary, summary points here. 
intrapleural pressure. So intrapleural pressure means uh, the pressure in here, in this pleural cavity. Intrapleural pressure is less than intrapulmonary pressure. Another name for intrapulmonary pressure is intraalveolar pressure. So what you're thinking about there is this pressure. So the, the, the air pressure in your lungs is greater than the pressure exerted by this fluid. So what that causes is a net outward pressure of the air inside of those lungs. So the, the lungs stick to the walls of the thoracic cavity. Uh, when you have your mouth open or your, your nasal cavity open so that it's continuous with the atmospheric pressure, they're equal to each other. So whatever the pressure is in the atmosphere is the same pressure in your uh, respiratory system, uh, your lungs at rest at least. Next slide. All right, so here's Boyle's Law. Now again, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Let's look at this uh, diagram on the right first, okay? So this one over here. You can see that the first container has a volume of one liter and whatever, a pressure of 100 millimeters of mercury. If I decrease that volume by, by one half, so I make it, instead of a one liter, I make it 0.5 liters, pressure doubles. So when I, when I cut the volume in half, I double the volume. If I cut the volume by one-tenth, if I made it 0.1 liters, then P2, would be 1,000 millimeters of mercury. So all you have to do is solve for the the uh, the variable that you want to solve for uh, to determine whatever P1 or P2. Uh, and if you have any questions on that, please stop by my office hours if you need me to run through it. But it's a simple solve for the 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 uh, the variable. Now, <clears throat> think of this is kind of this is what you'd call a closed system over here. This is a closed system because the, there's no air getting in and out, right? So when I decrease that volume, pressure goes up because the air doesn't have anywhere to go. But if I put an opening in here, let's say, and I decrease the volume, well, the pressure would go up, which means that the air would go out. If I then increase the volume, pressure would go down in here, which means air would go in. So this is how our lungs work. That's, that's, that's how your respiratory system works. Over here, when I increase the volume by expanding my ribs or depressing my diaphragm, it's gonna cause the pressure in here to go down. The atmospheric pressure out here stays the same, so air kind of blows down into your, into your lungs. Conversely, if I decrease that volume by relaxing my ribs and uh, relaxing my diaphragm, it, the pressure inside of my lungs is going to go up and air is going to blow out. Now we call this a negative pressure ventilation because in order to get the air in, I just got to increase the volume, which decreases the pressure. So that, that pressure differential is caused by a, a negative pressure in my, in my lungs. Now that's opposite. You guys may have heard about um, ventilators uh, recently due to COVID. Uh, where they'll put, have to put someone on a ventilator, what they do is they put a tube down their throat, down their trachea, and uh, get it right to the bot, right to the base of that trachea where it splits in two, kind of like this. And that tube then uh, will push air into your lungs. So it's not like the volume of your lungs gets bigger, causing a lower pressure. You're just amping up the pressure outside of here and forcing air into the lungs, which you know, in an emergency, uh, can get the oxygen into your blood, but it's not uh, pleasant for the soft tissues that uh, that your lungs are made of. And the last slide, this is a quick one, a quick presentation, I hope. A uh, little bit of a summary here. I said I have it as respiratory system boils law. I just forgot to change that heading, but I'm not going to start over now. Uh, some of the muscles involved here. So let's see, I'm gonna just cross that off right now. Let's go with a different, a different heading. We're not gonna do that. We'll say uh, respiratory system muscles. I write like a child. Uh, <clears throat> so we see that the muscles of inspiration, and inspiration is the technical term for breathing in, 
uh, inspiration is active, as I've written there, which means that we actually contract muscles to do so. The primary muscles are these down here, the diaphragm and the external intercostals. Those cause the, the diaphragm depresses, causing the volume to get bigger, and the external intercostals cause the ribs to expand, likewise increasing the volume. If you really have to take a super deep breath, you can engage some of these accessory muscles and you know raise your shoulders up and your arms kind of change position. So just about when you're ready to blow out the birthday cake, right? Everybody, nobody goes, well, you can't see me, but they take a super breath. They go, right? So it's gonna engage all those other muscles. Now, I want you to try this once. Take a really deep breath and hold it for a couple seconds and now let it out. So what did you have to do to let it out? All you had to do was uh, relax. So normal breathing is expiration is passive. So you just you breathe in, takes energy, relax, whew, air goes out. Now if you're going to have forced expiration, or here they call it active breathing, forced expiration sounds better. Then you're going to engage your abdominal muscles and your uh, some accessory rib muscles, the internal intercostals. Uh, so to really compress that thoracic cavity forcefully. So when you want to blow out a birthday cake or blow out, uh, blow down a, a little pig house, then you'll 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 use this forced expiration and engage these other muscles. All right. Well, be sure you look at the videos that I have posted. I think there's seven of them, and the photographs that have questions and um, notations on them. And good luck out there. Stay safe.